Hello, everybody. Hello, friends and dates and lovers and strangers and others. My name is Sharon Hayes, and I will be emceeing this event this afternoon. I want to begin by acknowledging that we come together today on the traditional lands of the Lenape, and I want to thank them and to recognize their continued presence and the influence of their ancestors on our lives and our time on this land. <clears throat> I am incredibly happy to be with you all here today. We have ahead of us an afternoon of incredible, what fell? Not important. We have uh, ahead of us an afternoon of incredible performers, artists, writers, activists, who will all be presenting responses to Zoe Leonard's 1992 text, I Want a President, a large version of which is, which way is 13th? That way, uh, which is currently wheat pasted at 13th and the High Line, just a few blocks away. It is, um, our event today is one of a, a tidal wave of imaginings of where we have been, where we are, and where we're going. This is a rally, a celebration, a call to act and to speak about what we'll all discover today together, about our desires and about our futures. It reminds me of the, one of my favorite protest calls, which I might ask you, so I'll say it right now, I might ask you as we kind of go along, what do, you, what do we want? When do we want it? Um, for me, on a personal level, I'm incredibly happy to be a part of this consideration of Zoe's 1992 text because I became a dyke, an artist, a feminist, and a political person in New York City right around that time period, uh, that year of her, her writing, sort of before and after as all of um, as all of that was unfolding and cascading out of me. This afternoon of reflection and response therefore has a kind of personal reverberation for me. And one of the things that I learned immediately upon arriving into this, this city in 1992 was the power, the potency, and the force of coming together, of being together, of publicity and publicness in moments of overwhelming political crisis. I learned very quickly through that decade and the decade that followed and the time, therefore, that has transpired since Zoe wrote her text, that political crisis seems to be a persistent condition. And for that reason, I've grown more and more reliant on these moments that we come together to process, to share, to respond, to mourn, to resist, to strategize, to sing, to read, to act, to scream. I um, imagine some of you, like me, that screaming is something I have been doing a lot over the last six months. I actually came up here this morning from my new home, which is in Philadelphia, in the swing state of Pennsylvania. And yesterday, my partner and I were walking out, knocking on doors, canvassing, and it reminds you of all of the things you know that uh, we come to this moment on the backs of a lot of people, and that there is something incredibly deep about being able to move in the line of other people's sacrifice. And that although the voting booth will never hold the totality of our desires, it's a dirty place, as Eileen Miles has told us, there is work to be done there and that our vote matters, as does our ability, our access, our insistence on the right to be public, to push things out into publicity, and to exercise together our publicness. And so it is my great, great honor and privilege and pleasure to bring up uh, someone who is not listed on the program uh, unfolding this afternoon for us, but who will begin our event and that is the inspired, the vulnerable, the creative, courageous, and inspiring Zoe Leonard.